Welcome to First Christian Church of Napa's online Easter service. My name is Trevor Backoffner. I'm the students and families pastor here at First Christian, and I just want to say thank you for joining us this Easter. We know you might have kids and students at home that are missing out on the kids at first and students at first activities, so we have some helpful resources for you and your family to participate in together on our website, fccnapa.org, so be sure and check those out. One of the best ways that we can care for each other during this time is in prayer, and the FCC prayer team is leading the charge on that front. Be sure to submit any specific requests through our app, or you can email them to prayer at fccnapa.org. Life has certainly thrown us a curveball in these recent weeks and months, but God is still here, and God is still providing for his people. When we give of our tithes and offerings, we are thanking God for continuing to do so. You can give through our app on our website, or you can text the preferred amount to 84321. Thank you, First Christian, for continuing to live generously. If it's your first time with us at our online service, we'd love to hear from you, and we have a gift for you. All you have to do is text the word EASTER to 1-707-414-0949. In the book of First Peter in the New Testament, it says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is so good. And in raising Jesus from death, he's given us new life and a hope that lasts on. In Easter, we celebrate that life and that hope. Easter. God bless you. Happy Easter, First Christian. Love, Alan Spike. Happy Easter, First Christian. Christ is risen indeed. Morning, First Christian Church. Happy Easter from the Roberts. Happy Passover and Easter from the Spences. Good morning, FCC. Happy Easter. Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday! We miss you all. God bless you. Keep A you love safe. and virtual hearts to our family at FCC. <laughs> Good morning, First Christian. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, First Christian family. Happy Easter from the Jacoby family. Happy Easter! Bye bye! Hi, FCC. He is risen, just like he said. Good morning, FCC. This is Fatima. And Yasmin, wishing you a great Sunday and a great Easter. Hi, FCC family. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from the Perez family. Hi, everyone. John and Casey Armstrong here. Happy Easter to you all, and God bless. Happy Easter from the Millers. Take three. <laughs> Happy Easter from the Littlefields! We miss you! Good morning, FCC! Happy Easter from the Sweets! Happy Easter, everybody! <laughs> Jan and Brad! Hi, FCC! This is Susan Godfrey here. want to wish you all a very happy Easter and good health. Happy Easter from the Magros! Happy, happy, happy! FCC from the front lines. He is risen. He has risen indeed. God bless you. Happy Easter FCC. We miss you and stay safe. I wish we could be squeezing in the pews with you today.
Happy Easter. I'm Pastor Allen, and I just welcome you today to our online Easter service. Hey, there's an old saying in the church uh, that when, a, when we were at Easter, a minister would stand up and say, Jesus is risen, and the congregation would respond, He is risen indeed. Well, I just want to encourage you, let's just do that right now where we are, just to get us into the Easter mindset. When I say Jesus is risen, you just respond, He's risen indeed. All right, ready? Jesus has risen. That's right, risen indeed. Well, I just celebrate that and everybody around the world right now celebrating and taking time to reflect on Easter. And I'm glad you're here checking in with us today. But what is Easter? I mean, what's it all about? Some of us, right, we've had the egg hunt already and uh, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, some of us maybe are getting ready for virtual brunch. Anybody doing that today? <laughs> some of us are, you know, already had our fill of chocolate rabbits and Easter marshmallow peeps and all kinds of things. But really, what is Easter? Because right now, over the last several hours and the hours to come, people are going to slow down. They're going to take time. They're going to celebrate. They're going to remember the meaning of Easter. But that's a great question. You know, what is Easter really all about? See, I think over the years that we've added all kinds of fun traditions and exciting things and family idea, uh, plans and, and uh, fun activities. Uh, there are a lot of meanings that have transpired for people today about Easter. I mean, what the meaning of it is. Uh, I wonder, somewhere uh, kind of down the line, somehow we've lost the real meaning of Easter. Maybe the best way to just say, here's what Easter's about, here's the meaning of Easter, <clears throat> is that Easter is simply a moment in time, an event in human history an event that causes people to slow down all around the world over time to take a second look at the event of Easter. Well, let's just take that moment right now. Let's slow down and take a quick look at the events of Easter. In fact, there's an ancient writer by the name of Paul who wrote to a group of people living in the city of Corinth. And he writes to them in this letter in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, these words. He says, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. What's the good news? Well, that's the message and the meaning of Easter. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. In other words... If the events of Easter didn't happen, they're not true, then Houston, we have a problem, right? Why? Because Jesus said so much, did so much that led up to the events of Easter. If that's not true, well, then we are like what has been written. We are of the greatest of fools, right? Well, let me say something, maybe a statement here, and it may be a challenge to some of you, and it, it may cause you to pause for a minute. Today, as we focus on Easter and the meaning of Easter and the events of Easter, all centered around the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we say that we don't believe the resurrection because we've read about it in the Bible, in the scriptures, in a book. The followers of Jesus themselves didn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead because they read about it. Right now, before you label me a heretic and kind of start blasting me on social media, hang with me for a second. 
See, to simply call the Bible a book is really kind of a misrepresentation. The Bible's not a book. The truth is, it's a collection of 66 different ancient writings written by probably 40 different people over the span of maybe 3,500 years. Not all consecutively, but broken up different times and by different people. In fact, some of the people who wrote it, they were eyewitnesses to Jesus' ministry and life on earth and witnesses to his resurrection, the meaning of Easter. And get this, some of them hung out with Jesus even after the fact. See, the reason that we believe in the resurrection is because the personal account, the personal eyewitness to those events. I mean, who were these people? Well, take a minute and look at some of them. There was Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. We could consider him kind of a traitor to his people because being a tax collector in that day and age was like the worst of professions. And then there was a guy named Mark. Now, he wasn't an eyewitness account, but he recorded Peter's eyewitness account to Jesus' life. In fact, he was probably the first one to publish the biography or the story of Jesus' life. And then we had this guy named Luke. He was a doctor. He himself, again, not an eyewitness, but he wrote not only his gospel account by his name, Luke, but he also wrote the book of Acts. And as he put in his own words, he wanted to give an orderly account to the events surrounding the life of Jesus, specifically the resurrection, the linchpin of the entire Christian faith. But then we had John, and John was a friend of Jesus. He was a fisherman. He was the one that when Jesus looked down from the cross and said to take care of my mother upon my death, he was the one who received that assignment from the Lord. And then there was Peter, another great friend of Jesus's, but he was also a liar, right? In fact, he abandoned Jesus at one of the most critical times in Jesus's life during his trial. All of them were witnesses to the life of Jesus and to his, his ministry and to his resurrection. Now, did they all lie? Were they all confused? Some people say that. <clears throat> But maybe of all those who wrote about Jesus, I think maybe Paul, who wrote maybe half of the New Testament, is of the most interesting one to look at. Uh, he wasn't a simple bystander to Jesus' ministry. He wasn't standing in the background kind of taking notes of what Jesus said, uh, events of what Jesus did. Um, he, in fact, thought that the followers, or followers of Jesus were uh, some kind of cult, a spinoff of Judaism in that day. And so what he did, he got uh, leadership authority to, quote, purify the people, right? A permission to purify. In other words, he was able to go in and uh, have people arrested, have them beaten, uh, even killed all for following Jesus. And get this. Later on, he himself becomes one of them. Whole nother story you should check out. But he becomes a great leader in the church, writes much of the New Testament, travels all around the world, starting these small little enclaves, these small groups of people who would follow Jesus. It's amazing. See, we don't believe, like Paul, because we read about it, but because of the eyewitness accounts to the events of Easter. <clears throat> now, if that's not enough uh, about these men and kind of what they believe, get this. None of these men believed that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. Not None of them. See, we hold these guys in high regard. Uh, we believe their, their words. Uh, we read them. We study them. These are great men of faith. But the truth is, is that none of them were hanging outside the tomb waiting for Jesus to come back. They weren't doing that old, you know, countdown backwards. Ten, nine, eight. Seven. I mean, no one was doing that. In fact, the truth is, is they all ran away. They all ran and hid. <clears throat> Even by their own omission, they say, we lost faith in Jesus. <laughs> well, let's come back to the story of Easter. In fact, Luke's account in Easter. In Luke chapter 24, in verse 1, we read, <clears throat> But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. See, it was a quick, hasty burial of Jesus, and they wanted to give him a proper burial. And so they brought all these spices and they came. So why was no one kind of waiting at the tomb for them when they arrived? Well, because Jesus was dead, and they all figured that's where he was going to stay. He would stay dead. No one was wondering, well, maybe, right? 
And the truth is, is Jesus had told them before dying that those events would happen. He would be arrested, he would go through this trial, and then he would die. It was almost as if he was telling them uh, the story that they would pull one of these. No, 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 not gonna listen, right? Uh, It's like, no way, Jesus, I mean, you're the man. This isn't gonna happen, there's no way these things are gonna happen. So they just didn't believe it. They didn't believe and so they didn't wait. We drop down into the passage in verse nine, Luke continues to record it like this. And so they rushed back. These women rushed back from the tomb to tell the 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. Verse 10, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. Now, that's a ton of detail. Really important to note, right? Did they all make it up? Uh, They all kind of like scheme and conspire to do this. Let's just say they did for just sake of argument that they did. I sometimes wonder if I was gonna make up a story, why wouldn't I make it up that I looked a little bit better than I portray in the scripture, right? (laughs) Well, the reason is why is because verse 11, but the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it, right? No one believed it. Jesus has died. All hope is gone. They all thought, that there is no way that Jesus could rise from the dead. And maybe today you're even thinking that same kind of thing. There's just no way. And and even in their own words, they said, hey, we've lost faith. It's over. It's done. You know, we give up. I mean, we don't know what to do. But all of that turned around. Verse 12, Peter's the first one of the group to jump up. Something is spur, spurs in him, and he, he's got to go check it out for himself. It says, however, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Those things that, those things that were wrapped around Jesus' body. They were still there, but the body was gone. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. What had happened? He went out and started telling people and sharing about the life of Jesus, sharing the way of Jesus. All of them did. In fact, they got to the place where all of them were willing to give up their lives for Jesus. So what happened, right? What happened from the moment where they lost all hope to now they're willing to give up their lives for the message of Jesus? Well, the answer is probably pretty simple. They saw Jesus. They saw Jesus, right? Now think about this, because it's really important. There are a lot of people who are willing to give up their lives for a cause, for something they believe in, but that wasn't the case with these folks. They didn't give up their lives because of their belief. They gave up their lives because what they saw. It was more than a belief system, right? They went out. Uh, sharing the message of Jesus, sharing the way of Jesus, not because of a religious system, but because of the events that took place. And those events, they changed everything. Well, Paul, again, not being an eyewitness to the account, uh, not being at the tomb, and, and not being a follower of Jesus by any stretch of the means, he has a change of heart. Easter changes him, changes his whole destiny. And that's what we saw earlier in that letter to the Corinthians. In fact, back to it, he's following up with them and recapping the Easter events. Verse 3, 1 Corinthians 15, I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures say. Verse 4, he was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures say. What are the scriptures he's referring to? It's the Old Testament. The Old Testament speaks to Jesus coming and dying so that we might have life and the forgiveness of sin. In fact, he goes on in verse 5, he says that Peter sees Jesus. And after Peter saw him, he says in verse 6, and get this, this may be new information, 500 people see him. Right? There was a period of time, 40 days, that by the time Jesus had been buried, rose again, and ascended back to heaven where he is today at the right hand of God the Father, there was a 40-day window where he ministered to the people, 500 of them. In fact, Paul heard this and he went on a road trip, right? I got to hear firsthand account. I want to see and talk to people face to face about this. And he says that some of those folks were even still alive while he was writing these le- this letter. In verse 7, James hears and all of them hear. And then Paul says in verse 8, he makes a comment of why he 
follows. Again, not because he saw, but because he talked to some who did see. And it changed their lives. It changed the meaning of their lives, really for the rest of their lives. So what does that mean for us today? Here we are in the 21st century. What does that mean for us? As a follower of Jesus, if you say, hey, I, I follow Jesus, you can remember a distinct time in your life where you made a declaration of faith, where you said, I've made a decision to follow Jesus. I'll follow him for the rest of my life. Well, today, this means we celebrate. We celebrate Jesus. We, we remember that it wasn't about you know, the songs we sing or the traditions we have, the feelings and the goosebumps. It really is about Easter being a moment in time, an event that has changed everything. In fact, we might say it's the most verifiable event in history. There's so much evidence for it. In fact, we can be here alive in the 21st century with all the science, the technology, the medicine that we have uh, at our disposal and still can say we believe, not because we've seen, but because of those who were present at that first Easter event who did see and shared their story so that we could celebrate. Well, maybe today you're like, I'm just not there yet. Uh, you know, I'm still having some questions, some doubts. I, I'm not decided to make that step and follow Jesus. Well, I want to encourage you to give it a second look. I think the message of Easter, the meaning of Easter is worth a second look. If you need help, I'd be honored to help you think up through it, ask and answer some questions for you. If you are there today and you said, you know what? I have taken a second look and I am ready today to follow Jesus, then I'd like to invite you just to pray with me. Just a quick, short, simple prayer. Something that I prayed when I first gave my life to Jesus. Just pray with, pray with me. Father in heaven, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for sending him to live a life I could not live, to die a death that I should have died for forgiving me of my sin so that I might live with you in freedom. And today I receive his grace and I receive his love and I receive his forgiveness. In his name, Holy Spirit, fill me that I might live my life changed all because of Jesus from this day forward. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that, I just cheer you on. I'd love to hear about it. You just drop us a note, a post that, hey, I prayed that prayer with you. We'd like to encourage you and support you in your walk of faith. If you have some questions, you can direct message me. I'd love to engage with you, answer some of those questions. And I'd like to invite you all back as this we go into this next week looking to Christ and how we live a faith-filled life. God bless you because Jesus is risen. He's risen indeed. Thanks for listening to Pastor Allen's message. We invite you to worship with us as Cleve and Taja Cox lead us in this next song. From our home to yours, we wish you a very happy Easter. We hope you have a blessed day. Every breath that I am
came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he instituted what we refer to as communion, the new covenant. Luke records it like this, and he took bread and he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the bread together. And in the same way, after the supper, he had taken the cup. It says, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. His blood was shed so that we might be forgiven. Let us take the cup now together in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you his face to shine upon you. Thank you for joining us online today. If you haven't yet had the chance, be sure to check out Easter Jam online. You'll find it on Facebook, YouTube, FCCNapa.org, and on the FCC app. God bless you all, and happy Easter from First Christian Church of Napa.